I haven't grown an extra foot since the last time you saw me. In fact, the reason I'm up here is because this vehicle is too big. I'm standing on the automatic running boards just to give myself a little bit of extra height to see over this vehicle. In fact, this is easily the biggest vehicle we've had the chance to feature here on Test Drive. Our spotlight today is on the 2018 Cadillac Escalade Platinum. There is no doubt about it. This is the king. The S-Class certainly dominates when it comes to cars, but here in North America, when you see a Cadillac Escalade roll up, you're looking. So we're gonna be showing you everything about this car, going in depth with it, taking it on a drive, and going over everything you need to know if you happen to find $110,000 in the cushions of your seat and wanna figure out what you wanna spend it on. So while this vehicle is based on Chevy's full-size SUV platform, similar with the Chevy Tahoe and GMC Yukon, really they are very similar, uh, the front end is definitely unique to the Cadillac, aside from the fact that it's got a huge Cadillac grille on the front. Uh, there are some really unique things about this vehicle. If you take a look at the headlights here, they do wrap around kind of from the top all the way down. You've got five LED jewel kind of lights here, uh, and you've got the signature running lights. It actually has the Cadillac, you know, cursive writing logo in the top here uh, and you move down the, that running light kind of continues into the bottom and your turn signals at the bottom in the center now the thing is that i've noticed with this it doesn't have adaptive headlights and the reason why it's very unique something that we have seen on cadillac models before but when you use uh, your headlights at night whether you're turning left or right you have the signal on or your wheel moves instead of turning one of the leds either direction it's actually a cornering lamp will kind of turn on if you're making a turn so it doesn't really work as well as some of the other systems but cadillac has always had cornering lamps on their vehicles now moving along to the rest of the vehicle here each door has a contact point to be able to unlock it which is great if you do have a kid and you have to put them into the back you can unlock the door from the door you're putting them in rather than some other suvs where you have to click this button twice and then get to the back and open it and you saw there the running boards will open automatically so when you open the door they pop out makes it a little bit easier for you to get into the vehicle and then after you close the door they stay open for a second or so just in case you are moving into the back seats but they will close there are lights built into the bottom of it so they act as puddle lights and as i mentioned you've got the lights here underneath the mirrors but you've also got lights that run along the doors so it really is a lot of lighting with this it really looks nice at night you've got all the lights that are around it but they're not overpowering they're subtle enough that you know you can certainly tell that it's your car maybe if you park next to a white uh, yukon you won't forget that this is yours but it really looks nice if you're maybe taking somebody out for dinner they haven't seen your car before it's dark and you show them some of these little bells and whistles now out back it is again very unique to the cadillac uh, with the other vehicles from gm in this size you do have these side parking sensors which helps uh, because obviously it's a massive vehicle but it also helps for the autonomous parking now the thing i really like about this and i haven't seen this on smaller suvs for 15 years now so you can open up the back glass without actually opening up the trunk so this works well if you want to put some stuff really quickly in the back here for example uh, today i went to go get groceries and because this car is so fast and i floor it all the time my groceries kind of hit the back of the trunk here so if i were to open it automatically my eggs would have fallen on the ground this way you just put your groceries in and out without a problem you also have automatic power lift gate so you really don't have to worry if you really just don't want to have to do it yourself it does it for you and again some of the other little quirks in here we uh, are going to talk about it during our test drive but they do share a lot of things with something like the buick enclave that we drove before so you do have the ability to drop the seats with the push of a button but unlike the buick because the center row maybe is not as functional as you might hope you can lower it with the button so if you really don't want to do it yourself you can throw those seats up get it out of the way so if you are maybe putting something big you're moving a house or you're buying some lumber and you need the extra space you can do it and you can pull at least the back seats up on your own but uh, you are going to have to get into the back there and pull that back row up center row on your own it is not automatic now if you're like me uh, this vehicle almost doesn't fit in your garage but uh, most people are going to be parking it indoors because let's be honest 
at $110,000, you don't want to leave it outside. But if you go to the store and uh, it's cold outside and you want to start it up, you have the remote starter. And that sounds really good. Oh, yeah. 420 horsepower that V8 engine starts up for you. And uh, if you forget, ah, oh, I forgot to go get the eggs, you got to go back into the store, hold the remote starter button again and it'll shut it off. So it's really good to be able to warm things up. And I found it's one of the smartest systems. It'll turn on the heated seats automatically based on the temperature outside. So if it's a cooler day, uh, then it'll turn on maybe setting one. If it's really cold out, it'll turn it on to maximum. So little things like that, I found a really nice. And another thing too, I don't know why GM's gone with this type of system, but even though you set these up as automatic power folding, uh, it's not automatic. If you were to lock the door from here, doesn't do anything. You actually have to hold the key fob for a second and then it'll close. So you can do it from the control on the driver's door, but I find maybe they should just do it automatically, either when you lock the car without having to hold it, because really this is gonna be in your pocket, maybe in your briefcase, you don't wanna be holding it. They should be able to do it from the door and they don't, because you can hold it and it doesn't do anything. So little things like that, for $110,000, you'd kinda want it to maybe do that. Now that 420 horsepower engine is quite, uh, quite a beast and I have to say the GM has kind of thought a little bit about the environment when it comes to it so it does have cylinder deactivation we haven't seen it happen too often but uh, when you're kind of coasting on the highway or even in some side streets it will kick it down to a v4 instead of using all eight cylinders and it does help a little bit when it comes to fuel economy we've averaged about 13.8 on our drive but uh, we have heard that you can get it down to uh, about 11 if you're very light with your foot and maybe on the highway 180% of the time. But enough about the exterior of the car. Let's hop in and see what we think about the inside on our road test. Ooh. Oh, hello there. I didn't even see you. I was too busy getting my massage in my Cadillac Escalade here. In fact, there's a lot of things about this Cadillac Escalade that would almost make you fall asleep just because it's so comfortable. That massaging seat is quite nice. There's a anti-fatigue setting for the driver, as well as kneading and rolling for both the passengers at the front. You also have heated seats, heated steering wheel for the driver, ventilated seats. There's actually a lot of heated options for the front seats as well, not just the bottoms, but you can also have heat on the back or just the back. This is the most expensive vehicle we featured here on Test Drive. Now I know we did do the BMW i8, but we didn't drive it at least on the video. So this is now the benchmark for opulence. And I have to say that at just about $110,000, you really do feel like you're driving in $110,000 worth of car only because everybody else realizes that you're driving this type of car. So the first thing you notice when you're driving around in the Escalade is everything is more or less covered in leather. I mean, the doors and the dashboard here and the seats and everything, they're all leather. I do find that the dashboard itself feels a little firm, maybe a little plasticky. If you give it a little so nice tap there, um, you do kind of feel that it's a little hollow on the inside. So maybe it's not all like super thick, supple leather, but overall the interior is wrapped in more or less the same thing. Now I would say that my only recommendation would be maybe to have the leather dashboard a uh, slightly different shade of brown than the rest of the car. We've seen that with something like my 7 Series where you've got a different color of brown for the dashboard and then the seats and everything else are slightly lighter and it really gives a good contrast to be able to you know kind of distinguish what is what and I think maybe something like that would help a little bit there. Now the multi-information display in the center is probably one of the best that I've seen. It's very customizable. Uh, there's basically three main parts to it. The left screen which is more or less your fuel economy and information about the vehicle. You can have temperature for your coolant and whatnot there. Uh, the center is really just for speed. You can either have a big display of the speed. Uh, I've got it set up with the, uh, the speed limit as well, which is nice. And then on the right, you can have things like your music information. And it's very good, unlike some of the other vehicles we've driven, where it really just tells you what channel you're on. It gives you, in this case, Sirius XM, the channel, the name of the channel, the band, and the song. So you get a lot of information there, allowing you to keep things like the navigation on the center, but still know what song's going on by seeing it on your screen here. Now, speaking of the navigation, the center stack here is actually pretty well laid out. I wasn't 100% sold on the center console when I first got in the car. Uh, it took a little bit of getting used to it, but now I really do 
find it to be pretty good. You know, it's laid out pretty well. You've got the screen up top. It does have a motion sensor, so uh, when you're on the navigation, for example, it kind of hides all the other little buttons, and it'll detect you reaching out to the screen, and it'll bring up things like zoom in and out, and be able to switch between things like the camera and the radio. So it's really nice to have things like that. And then the rest of the buttons for the climate control, they are like your iPhone, where you can only use it if you're using your fingers. You can't use uh, gloves or your dog in order to be able to switch things through. And you also have to be very gentle. At first, I was just like, pushing the buttons and nothing worked. You have to be gentle. You have to treat it like the $110,000 car that it is. So you just lightly press them and they work much better that way. You've got your heated controls for your seats, ventilation, climate control, volume, it's a slider. Um, so if you're the passenger and you're maybe playing around with the controls, just be aware of that, that it is a slider uh, for the volume. And sometimes you'll be kind of putting your thumb down to uh, give you a better uh, ability to push those buttons. And then you might accidentally slide the volume up to maximum. So there's uh, a nice layout there. You kind of get used to it. Along the sides, much like the Buick, are some controls for the vehicle. Your mode decides whether you're in touring mode, sport mode, or snow and ice. You can move the pedals when you're in park, traction control. The glove box, it's a button. You push it, the glove box opens up. You've got your lane keep assist, parking, and then this vehicle also has uh, an autonomous automatic parking system. You push the button and tell it if you wanna be pulling into a parallel spot or a typical parking lot spot. And it'll use the sensors on either side of the car, depending on which one you select, to uh, look for a spot that the vehicle will fit, and then it'll take over. And it, it is a little nerve wracking if you've never done it before. Basically, you are still in control of the brake and gas, but you take your hands off the steering wheel and it will get you into the spot. Um, and again, it's a little nerve wracking. I'm not 100% sold on it, but the tech does work. We did try it uh, several times and it did work every time. So that, there is that option and I think it is helpful. I mean, especially with parallel parking, with a vehicle of this size, some people might not be able to do it. So being able to have it done for you automatically, albeit a little slow, uh, is not a bad thing. And then being able to pull into spots too, I guess, uh, you, know, you should be able to do that on your own, but the car does allow you to do that. So there is some tech going on in here. We have seen that on other vehicles. So it isn't new, but overall it works pretty well. Now the other big feature of the interior here is that screen that we saw on the Buick Enclave. It uh, uses a separate camera on the back of the vehicle to show you what's out the back. Normally uh, you'd have three rows of passengers behind you and about 16 uh, kilometers between the front windshield and the back. So it's nice having that camera because then you don't need to have, uh, you know, flipping it down and kind of looking and seeing what's going on. I find it's really good. I just take a quick gander up. And again, as we mentioned with the Buick Enclave, you can't check it in the mirror how good you look because it's a camera, but I do like the size and display of it. The overall ride has been very good. Uh, the seats in the front are very supportive. It helps having the massage function. I've been using it uh, pretty much throughout the entire drive uh, since we've had this vehicle. And then it also has, the vehicle has GM's magnetic ride system. Now the magnetic ride is not gonna do what the Bose magnetic system did where it'll jump over bumps for you. Really it just helps with cornering. So if you were to take a corner pretty quick, in a normal vehicle without some sort of uh, active body control system, uh, you know, you'd be moving left and right into the turns. You know, the G-forces are kind of pushing you slightly. But with this, I found that you can go pretty quick into turns and you're not going to feel it. Uh, you're gonna stay pretty level and flat. And it's a really cool feature to have. I don't know how reliable it really is, but it seems to work pretty well. And as you can see, we're going around a corner there. I almost didn't move. Now that is the big question though, is, when you are moving, how much can you move? And it's not about going left and right, it's about going forward in a straight line. This 420 horsepower, 6.2 liter V8 engine has a lot of grunt. Uh, I'm gonna kick it down here. It takes a minute to select which gear you need to be in based on the 10 speed automatic transmission, but my God, does this thing get up to speed quickly uh, and really efficiently in terms of just getting you up to speed. Gas mileage though is not so much. We've averaged about 13.8 liters per 100 kilometers during our drive with this. So it is something to keep in mind if you're uh, actually planning on driving this, maybe back and forth to work. It might not be the most fuel efficient thing that you can buy, uh, but it certainly is a lot of fun. That power really gets down to the wheels as quick as possible. And if you really wanted to use sport mode, it would be even quicker, but we're in touring mode because 
I'd like to maybe keep a little bit of the money I, I, I have set aside because it is a very expensive vehicle to run when it comes to gas. Now with most full-size vehicles, like we've shown with the Mercedes S-Class, BMW 7 Series, uh, the back seats are kind of where all the action is. That's where most of the people end up sitting if they buy these vehicles. And the Cadillac Escalade is one of those vehicles that is supposed to be used for the back, uh, at least middle row, for whoever buys it, right? If, you know, if you're a successful person, you need to be driven around all the time. You're not necessarily going to sit in the front because you need to do stuff in the back. You've got work to do. You want to be left alone. The tint on the back is really dark, so you want to be back there and have some privacy. But I have to say that the rear uh, seats, first of all, are, are quite small, uh, as we've seen in most uh, vehicles. But this being a full-size uh, SUV, you'd think there'd be a little bit more room back there. But it is really still just for small children and uh, smaller adults. The, the center row, though, is not a whole lot better. Uh, we're really disappointed to find out that the center row actually doesn't slide forward and back, so they are in a fixed position. You do have a button to flip the seat up, uh, so if you're in the back back and you need to get out, you can flip the seat up with really no force required at all. But the fact that you can't slide the seats up or back uh, makes it a little tight for people back there. It's not as bad as I thought uh, realistically, but you know, if you're somebody of my size, both in weight and height, uh, it does get a little tight back there. So it would have been nice if you could slide the seats. Um, but overall, our four-year-old daughter had a pretty comfortable experience back there. She uh, obviously doesn't need much. And if uh, you aren't using a car seat, there are outboard heated seats for those captain chairs back there. Um, but we've been told that they are more comfortable in even something like the Chevy Tahoe. So again, something to consider if you're thinking about buying this car to be driven around in, maybe the center row isn't where you're gonna be spending most of your time. But if you are a child and you need to be entertained, then uh, you do have some options back there. There are three screens, and technically there's four if you consider the one in the front, because the front player here is a Blu-ray player. You can put a Blu-ray in the front. If you're parked, you can watch the Blu-ray on the main screen here, or you can flip down the screen that's in the back, and you can watch whatever movies you wanna watch based on that. But what we found is if you're using that Blu-ray player in the front, all the audio in the car is switched over to the sound that's coming off of the DVD. So, you know, if you're happy watching Cars 2 or something like that with your kids and uh, you, know, you don't mind hearing it as you're driving along, then you can certainly do that. However, each headrest has its own independent DVD player with monitor built into it. And we do find that it works well. You can have either side play either movie. So if you put a movie in for passenger on the left, they can watch their own movie. And if you have another kid on the right side, they can watch the same movie if they want, or you can put a different Blu-ray, or you can put a different DVD in there and watch something entirely different. And it comes with two wireless headphones, so that's the way that they can listen to it. So you can use the wireless headphones to be able to have your kids listen to whatever movie they're watching, or you do have a headphone jack on the back of the DVD player, so you can just plug in your typical headphones and be able to listen to it that way. So there are some options there. And uh, overall, it did work really well. We didn't have any issues going over bumps, so the uh, disc skip works pretty well with this vehicle. So if you uh, do need to use these systems for your kids to keep them entertained, maybe on a long trip, then you don't have to worry too much about setting it up. Um, it's just once the movie's over, you do have to get into the back there, use the remote, maybe reset it, put it in a new movie, and go from there. But overall, uh, they do work pretty well, and it gives you some options there. As well, you can plug in a USB or HDMI to the back there, so you can watch different things other than just a DVD if you don't have that anymore. Okay, I know that was a lot, and thank you for sticking through this very comprehensive tour and review. When we're dealing with a $100,000 vehicle, we want to make sure we're thorough. Now for the wrap-up. We like quite a lot about this Cadillac, including its presence on the road and that street cred it's built up over the years. The magnetic ride system worked great, and the engine delivers all the power you need for a vehicle of this size. The rear lift gate's glass opening is a nice bonus, and the rearview camera is ideal when driving a mammoth of a vehicle like this. For just under $110,000, we were expecting more from the Escalade. The center row seats are very underwhelming, with few adjustment options and the lack of ventilation or massage. The rear entertainment system also had some issues for us. The fact that the center monitor can only be used with the main audio system was annoying. The navigation system isn't awful, but a larger screen would be nice to match the price tag of this vehicle. Finally, the interior trim and leather didn't feel as luxurious as what's found on the competition or even other vehicles in Cadillac's lineup. 
Overall though, the Escalade will continue to sell incredibly well because of the name it's got. Most people will ignore the Mercedes GLS or Lincoln Navigator when driving along the highway, but I guarantee people will look at you with the Escalade. When you're the undisputed king, you can do whatever you want. Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the 2018 Cadillac Escalade Platinum. If you have any questions about this vehicle, you can leave a comment below or email us at media at perpetualradio.ca. You can follow me on Instagram at Niall Livesey to see what we're doing on Test Drive and also read the full reviews of the vehicles we feature at perpetualradio.ca. Until next time, take care.